Are you ready to take your business to the next level? Every day, there are countless books and articles that are published offering the key on how to make your business a success. It's easy to feel overwhelmed trying to keep up and run your business. That's why Deb Creer created the Business Power Hour. Keep up on the latest trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. Let the Business Power Hour do the heavy work for you. Good morning, good morning. I am Deb Creer, and I am passionate about giving professionals the tools that they need to make themselves and their businesses as successful as possible. And today we're going to be talking about something that is so important for anyone who is a leader. And let me be very clear on that. Everyone is a leader in some way, whether it's at your house with your kids and your spouse, whether it's as a volunteer, maybe you know you own your own company or your senior management, or maybe you're just a team leader on a project. We are all leaders and we're going to be talking about skills and things that leaders need in order to be successful and more importantly, to have everyone else around them be successful. And so please join me in welcoming James Kluski to our program today. Welcome, James. How are you? I'm great, Deb. Thank you very much for having me. Well, I love it. You know, and as you might be able to tell, James is not here in the States. He is in Ireland. And so I love it when we have our international guests because they do bring a different perspective. Um, And so I love talking with them. So, James, let me tell people just a little bit about you, and then we will dive into this. So, James Kluski is a former professional tennis player who was ranked 145th in the world, which, folks, that's high. Anybody who follows, that's that's high. Um, He was an Irish Davis Cup player. He was a private tennis coach, too, that guy named Sir Richard Branson, and he is now the founder of Give Learn, a learning solution which helps companies win and retain their best people. So again, James, welcome. Thank you, Deb. Great to be here. I'm really excited to have this conversation. Yeah, we're going to have such a great discussion. So one of the things I always like to ask my guests is tell us how you got to where you are today, because I think it's so important for people to know and, and to really find, you know, how it is that this is how, you know, for at least now, that this is your mission in life. Mm. Yeah, so so I grew up in Dublin. Uh, I was a, a, a tennis player, as you mentioned in my bio. Um, I ended up, when I was 14, uh, the an indoor centre uh, mm-hmm. opened near my house. Mm-hmm. That's when I got really, really into tennis. Um, now, I was into tennis before that, but then I got really into it when mm-hmm. I was 14, and the big thing that happened was actually a, a coach, a guy called Larry Jurovich, mm-hmm. moved to Ireland. Uh, and I think, you know, some of it is luck and some of it is we can be lucky the people we meet mm-hmm. and the people that support us and so on. But Larry really created this strong environment and culture in the tennis center. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I kept I kept playing through juniors and I was the number one ranked player in Ireland under 18. And I was recruited by a couple of colleges uh, mm-hmm. and I ended up moving to Louisiana and going to uh, LSU for, for four years mm-hmm. from 05 to 09. Mm-hmm. And it was always my dream to play professionally and to mm-hmm. do all that. And then when I finished college in 2009, I went to the professional circuit. And as you said, I got to 145 mm-hmm. in the world. And I just loved traveling. I loved meeting mm-hmm. people from different cultures and different backgrounds and so on and got to travel, you know, pretty much everywhere in the world, which was which was amazing. Mm-hmm. And then as as all athletes, you kind of come to that point where you think, well, what am I going to do next? Right. right. I, I can't I, do I, this forever. I can't do this forever is, is right. And I was always quite entrepreneurial and, and mm-hmm. always kind of had business ideas and different things like that. And I think as a professional sports person, I think it's very, it's very clear that you're climbing a mountain. And I mm-hmm. think as a business owner, business mm-hmm. person, you're kind of, you, you have a mountain in front of you that you're mm-hmm. looking to looking to climb and scale and when I came off that mountain in tennis it was trying to figure out well what's the what's the next mountain Mm -hmm. that's you know what's what's uh what do I want to climb and I met a a business coach Mm -hmm. uh through through a friend who was a really really successful business guy and we had this relationship where I would coach him tennis he would coach me business uh, and he 
he coached me and what i kept coming back to was people performance mm -hmm. getting the helping people getting mm -hmm. it getting the best set of people um, and that kind of started me to or that that helped me to start my first company which was high caliber collective mm -hmm which was all around going into organizations and running programs around leadership and communications mm -hmm. and personal development and so on. Um, and then COVID, I had the idea for Give Learn before mm -hmm. COVID, but then during COVID, I had a little bit more time on my hands. Right, you couldn't go out and, and about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And then I started Give Learn, mm -hmm. um, which is, as you mentioned, an online learning solution. Uh, and yeah, I think my mission, it's it's... I love people. I love mm -hmm. meeting people. Mm -hmm. I love, um, you know, helping people try and be the best version of themselves. Um, and I really believe in that area of, of soft skill development mm -hmm. and, and how important it is to um, improve those areas of your life. So hopefully yeah. that gives you a good big snapshot of who I am. I love it. Well, describe Give Learn a little bit more. Tell us more about it. So Give Learn is a, it's an online uh, platform. So we have a full calendar. Mm -hmm. um, of live and on-demand classes and courses mm -hmm. and it's all around soft skill development mm -hmm. so we have where we have a lot of small and medium-sized companies who mm -hmm. are using the platform so we have weekly classes mm -hmm. presenters from all over the world and course leaders from all over the world and um, last month we had a, a program with on resilience for example mm -hmm. and with brian who's a neuroscientist on on building resilience and, mm -hmm. and and so on we have things like presentation skills uh, imposter syndrome and dealing mm -hmm. with imposter syndrome so for companies we have that full full program mm -hmm. of classes and courses and then what we do a little bit differently two things one is our classes are live so users mm -hmm. come from around the world and mm -hmm. join other users and they can engage with the presenter and then users earn points for attending our classes so yeah. this is really important to me mm -hmm. so they earn points and then they can use those points to donate to social causes and give right. to social causes. And um, mm -hmm. so for me, the vision at the start was mm -hmm. we need to link learning to doing good in the world. Mm -hmm. So an individual invests in their personal and professional development. Mm -hmm. They're doing good for themselves, but then they're doing good for someone else right. somewhere else. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's that's give learn in a nutshell mm -hmm. what we're doing. I love that concept because, you know, it doesn't matter what level we are at, what age, what anything, you know, giving back, I think is so absolutely critical. Um, mm -hmm. And, and it doesn't matter if you're giving millions, or if you're giving an hour of your time. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. It's important to give back. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's so important for companies to encourage their employees to give back. And I think this is, is something that is, is um, you know, they can, I, I worked for a company, um, it's changed its name now, but uh, when I worked for them, it was ING. Now it's called Voya mm -hmm. Financial. Um, and you're probably familiar with ING because it is yeah, a, a yeah, Danish yeah. company. Um, and the, um, we we had a very large philanthropic program um, and I helped manage it. That was uh, one of the things that I did. It had a, a pretty hefty budget. I mean, this was 20 years ago and our budget was, you know, close to a million dollars. And, um, and, I, and if there was something special, I could request more funds, mm -hmm. but it, we very strongly believed that our employees wanted to give back and, you know, and, and in fact needed to, you know, to kind of mm -hmm. help, it just helped them. You know, we knew how, how, how good they felt. And so they could either give back individually. Um, one of our big programs, since it was a, a, a financial company, a lot of mathematicians worked mm. for us. And so they were tutors at a local um, junior high, middle school. Mm. And, uh, you know, and, and they loved that. They would go every week down and work with, you know, the same student. And, and a lot of times they would work with them and, and you know, end up forming friendships with mm. these kids forever. You know, or we did have obviously that the um, things where we would you know, we just gave funds. I mean, you know, there were mm. times where that was appropriate or when we would do bigger company projects. Mm. And even back then, you know, our employees told us that that was part of why they worked for us. Mm. And I think that is one of the very important things that, that you talk about is, you know, employees value that. And so they want to work for those philanthropic minded companies. And I think on that, so I, I bookmarked an article this morning and mm -hmm. I, I skim read it. So mm -hmm. I don't want to kind of quote com complete stats, but it was from uh, PwC uh, in, in Europe. And they were talking mm -hmm. about stats around Gen Z mm -hmm. and generations that are coming into the workplace mm -hmm. now and how they're even more 
concerned well, what is is the company doing good for society mm -hmm. is the company doing good for the right. world they're a lot more conscious of their mental health mm -hmm. they're a lot more conscious of their well-being mm -hmm. they're a lot more conscious of um you know they want to they want to work the hours for the company mm -hmm. and do their best for the company but then they want to kind of switch off and, mm -hmm. and and they're also interested in learning and and the last piece i read from that piece was how you know some of them missed that kind of covid mm -hmm. learning piece and mm -hmm. um, and then secondly to that i actually through through necker uh, through um working with with richard branson mm -hmm. uh, one of the guys i've met there and I met him a few weeks ago again, an investor, and he invests in AI. And he was talking about how in the next couple of years, the people that will be successful are the people that can communicate, mm -hmm. can lead, can present, because, you know, AI and chat mm -hmm. GPT, and all, I know it's kind of buzzwords at the moment, but it's able to, it's going to be able to do a lot of mm -hmm. this stuff. Uh, right. so, so that kind of people, I can't do the people piece. Mm -hmm. That, that, um, people piece is really important mm -hmm. and being able to lead and communicate and so on. So um, I think it's, I think it's really, really important. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You know, those, those soft skills, as you say, are so important. Um, I've been having lots of discussion with people about AI and chat GPT and is it going to replace mm -hmm. everyone? Well, it's only it to me, at least the way it is right now is, you know, like I, yesterday I had it write a blog post for me and then I'll go in and I will personalize it. I will tweak it. I will mm. do the, those things. And so what's the difference between if I had, say, a VA write it for me? You yes, know, yeah, same yeah. same type of thing, except it did it in ooh, about 30 seconds <laughs> um, yeah. you know, and yeah. cost me nothing because I used the free <laughs> version. Yeah. So but but it is about adding that personal touch back in. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. so talk to us more about why soft skills are really so important for leaders. Mm. Well, a research research from Harvard says that eighty five percent of job success comes from having uh, having uh, good soft skills. Mm -hmm. So the research kind of backs that up. Mm -hmm. But I also think, you know, in terms of getting the best out of people, mm -hmm. I think in in terms of supporting people and coaching people and developing people, you know, people want to work for someone that they feel has their back, that they right. feel is investing in them, that mm -hmm. they feel has their best interests at heart mm -hmm. and so on. And I think people are more likely to stay with companies, mm -hmm. right? If they feel, if they feel valued by their mm -hmm. employer. And um, so I think valuing people is, is, is of the utmost importance. Mm -hmm. And look, it, it, it costs a lot to replace someone, right? So right. if someone walks mm -hmm. out the door and you have to hire a person, you have to, mm -hmm. you know, pay to onboard them, to train them, mm -hmm. to upskill them. Uh, it, it, it costs a lot. So I think, you know the metrics back up how important mm -hmm. those kind of soft skills are right. and i think sometimes you know i think sometimes companies you know we we're, we're very busy being busy mm -hmm. so we're in a lot of meetings we're, we're we're all you know we're all busy we're all working hard but i think when i was a professional tennis player i think sometimes actually taking a step back and training or you know getting some coaching and working mm -hmm. on your game to then go again and, mm -hmm. you know, try and achieve your goals as opposed to just feeling like you're kind of chasing the next mm -hmm. thing. Right. So I really believe that companies need to, in terms of those kind of priorities is invest in people to mm -hmm. upskill them, to, to be more successful, to then obviously help the company in the longer term, mm -hmm. you know, achieve their vision, earn more, mm -hmm. all those types of things. And so go on, you were going to say something there. No, yeah. Oh, sorry. No, so I think I think it's just I think it's uh, super important on that. And I think life is too short, right? People want to mm -hmm. work for people that they like. People want right. to work for people that they well, like is probably the wrong word. I think respect is respect. probably mm -hmm. yeah, it's probably a better word. Uh, people that respect um, and and a company that has a has a purpose, mission, vision, mm -hmm. all those types of things. Right. And lives it. I mean, you know, it's one thing for it to be on the wall somewhere, you know, but they need to actually, you know, do what they say they're going to do. Completely. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, one of the things in terms of leadership and like, look, there's there's different types of leaders mm -hmm. and there's different types of communicators and, mm -hmm. and all those types of things. 
but I remember, um, so I've been going to, to Necker since 2015 mm -hmm. to, to coach uh, Richard Branson tennis. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, for me, his secret sauce is around his kind of leadership and mm -hmm. personality and so on. And a couple of things stood out for me with him was I remember, so I had met him in 2015. Now mm -hmm. I only met him very briefly. And mm -hmm. then I was asked back in 2016 then mm -hmm. to coach him. So that's when I kind of got to know him a lot, lot better. And uh, when he was, I was on the island day one and I, I saw him kind of driving towards me in the golf cart and I thought, oh, you know, I was a bit nervous or whatever. Right. I was just going to ask you, did you think, oh my, oh, oh. Yeah, I was like, oh my God, like, here's an icon of <laughs> mm -hmm. entrepreneurship, you know, or his, you know, so he came along and he said, um, I said, oh, I'm, I'm James, I'm here, you know, good to see you again or something. I'm going to be kind of coaching you for mm -hmm. a few weeks or whatever. And he said, uh, oh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to learning from you. And that even took me aback. Like that right. was like a saying that I still remember mm -hmm. where, you know, I'm a lot better at tennis than him. Mm -hmm. So I can, I can give him value on mm -hmm. the tennis court. I can make him a lot better. Right. Mm -hmm. That was one thing that stood out. And then this, the, the second thing was the first, now I've been going back the last number of years. So mm -hmm. now I would, you know, know him very well. Like mm -hmm. that, that time day one, when we went and practiced. Um, so I was again, a bit nervous, coached him on the court. Mm -hmm. At the end of the session, we sat down. We we're having a cup of tea, and he said, um, "He said, oh, James, have you seen the have you seen the rest of the island?" And I said, uh, no, "I've seen little bits of it." Mm -hmm. And he said, "Oh, come on, I'll I'll uh, I'll show you around." Mm -hmm. So we get in the golf cart, he drives me around, and he mm -hmm. tells me, you know, "This is where Mary Robinson, who's former president of Ireland, mm -hmm. um, came, and Nelson Mandela, and so on." And uh, and then he says to me, "Have you met Have you met Joan, my wife?" and kids and I said no I haven't met her yet it's like oh, come on up have breakfast mm -hmm. it brings me up to breakfast and it's just that kind of like inclusive right you know, a nice guy a nice guy yeah mm -hmm. so you just have a feeling of like mm -hmm. you kind of want to go above and beyond for mm -hmm. you know you want to right. I don't say make him happy but like mm -hmm. just that kind of and, and that's not like that's not something that you kind of you know it's it, it's not a it's it's not a like a technical skill mm -hmm. right it's not like right. you know it's a it's mm -hmm. an iq genius mm -hmm. thing but it's just it's just kind of recognizing hey this guy doesn't really know anyone here maybe i'll bring him show mm -hmm. around right. and, you know it's that kind of like looking and, after him. and to say he's busy is an understatement so mm -hmm. you know I, he could have been doing a hundred other things but he mm -hmm. took the time to make you feel welcome Completely, yeah, completely. So I've been very, very lucky that I've, mm -hmm. you know, got to know someone like him and mm -hmm. learn from someone like him. And actually where Give Learn came from originally was there was a, an event on Necker when I was there where a lot of business leaders came mm -hmm. um, to, to solve the world's problems. Um, and Richard said to me, he said, oh, you know, come up and uh, if you want to listen in to, you know, uh, mm -hmm. hang out or whatever. So I went up and and... I was watching, you know, different people present and all mm -hmm. this. Is, I was like, this community of people. I'm like, mm -hmm. this is this is amazing, you know. Mm -hmm. And 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 actually, on that, one of the guys that was there that week was the head of Google's innovation. They call it the Moonshot Factory. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, Richard's there, front row with his notebook, taking notes. Right. So mm -hmm. like, you're always learning. You're always mm -hmm. trying to get better. You're all that performance mindset mm -hmm. of you're always trying to improve. Um, and I think with Give Learn is is you know we've presenters and course leaders from all mm -hmm. over the world from different backgrounds different industries and really just trying to help people mm -hmm. improve you know and i think that attitude to always be learning is mm -hmm. probably the most critical thing um you know and and when we look at our leaders and you know whether again it's you know somebody at, at a, a fairly you know basic level you know or all the way up to you know major leaders like like sir richard branson those who are successful are the ones who say, I'm always learning, you mm -hmm. know, and, and, you know, even if they're saying, you know, I'm reading X number of books a day, I, you know, or articles, or, you know, the first thing I do is I look at the Wall Street Journal, all of it, that's mm -hmm. all learning, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and I think that is just so absolutely critical for all of us. I mean, you mm -hmm. know, are we looking at what the daily news is? Are we reading industry, you know, publications? Are we learning from the other experts in our field? Because, you know, it, it, none of us know all of it. And I think that's where we really see the difference in leaders who are 
you know, somebody that we like and respect. It's those who, who, you know, we know are, are always looking for more and not saying, I know it all. I can, you know, I don't need to do that. You know, I'm, you need to listen to me because I am the expert. Mm. I, I, a couple of, I think it's, yeah, you've summed it up really well. There's a couple of things I wanted to say was one was on networking. So Mm -hmm. I, I kind of, you know, I'm a good networker or, Mm -hmm. you know, I've, I've met a lot of really interesting people and, one of the pieces of advice I got actually when I finished my tennis career was they said, now I would have probably done this anyway, but they said, make sure you read the newspaper every day or mm-hmm. kind of like what you said, reading mm-hmm. articles and whatever content, because, you know, you, you, you kind of, you're someone's, if you're speaking, if you're meeting someone from the airline mm-hmm. industry, they're not expecting you to be an absolute expert, but if you, hey. if you have a high level understanding of, mm-hmm. you know, Boeing did this or they, mm-hmm bought x amount of planes so i always think that's really important as a leader that you kind of have a grasp on what's mm-hmm. going on in, in 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 the world and then the second piece i wanted to highlight was i think there's almost an evolution as well of leadership and and you know i don't have any research to back this up so this is my opinion but i think when i was younger and i used to watch a lot of videos around leadership and stuff it was you know that kind of mentality of like you work 24 hours a day right you, mm-hmm. the you, workaholics like, the workaholic mm-hmm. whereas i think and, and i think this is probably one of the biggest learnings i learned from from richard actually is you know i was there 30 days with him uh last year he played tennis 28 days twice a day wow so he and he's publicly said this that he he and the re- and you know that kind of research shows that if you're more physically active and mm-hmm. so on that you're more productive right mm-hmm. so like it's almost non-negotiable in his right. diary that he had. Now, I'm not saying it has to be tennis. It could be you go for right. a walk, you mm-hmm. go for a run, whatever mm-hmm. it is for you, right? But I would have previously woken up in the morning and said, oh, my God, I have to get back to Deb on an email. Mm-hmm. I have to do a right. proposal. Yeah, we jump program. right in. Mm-hmm. I don't have time to do this. But now I make sure I go for a walk first thing in the morning because mm-hmm. I just find like it just kind of clears mm-hmm. the head and gets you mm-hmm. no matter what's on in that day. Right. I think I picked that up from Richard in terms of like, you know, you're going to be more productive Mm -hmm. if you're active. Mm -hmm. This kind of old style leadership Mm -hmm. piece of like, I'm working six in the morning until Mm -hmm. 12 at night. Mm -hmm. Don't think it really, I don't think it really works as, as well as we need to, we need, we need to look after ourselves Mm -hmm. as well. Um, Mm And so that was something that really stood out for me, I think in terms of leadership, uh, and then the third piece, can I keep going? Can I oh, say, yes, most definitely. This is this is fascinating. Oh, great. So, so um, I have a mentor who I met him through Necker. He's an amazing entrepreneur. He's a rocket mm-hmm. scientist uh, and entrepreneur who scaled a couple of businesses. And I actually asked him to do a, a session on Give Learn on mm-hmm. leadership. And he's going to do one this year. Um, but he... He said to me last year, he did he did two, la- two last mm-hmm. year. He's, one of them was when I asked him to do something on leadership, he said, mm-hmm. do you know what? Leadership is really, really interesting, but I'd love to speak on listening. Ah. He said, listening is the, he calls it listening, the greatest business asset you need to develop, uh, as in, yeah, how important that is. And mm-hmm. he's quite an introvert guy, just mm-hmm. in, in terms of sales and everything, mm-hmm. just how to listen. Um, and it's the other piece, the other session he gave was on creating trust in business how you mm-hmm. how you create trust mm-hmm. um so i thought that was really interesting in terms of yeah listening uh networking well-being mental mm-hmm. health and so on well and you know it's it's it is it's just absolutely critical that leaders do that and you know i'm dumbfounded when i think it's probably elon musk who said you know i sleep three hours a night hmm. uh, yeah you know, I'm I'm sure if he says that he does, but we also know, say, the benefits of sleeping. You know, your mm. body needs to recharge. Mm. So is he? You know, not doing that, and um, you know, and and you know, but then we listen to to, to people like Warren Buffett who say, you know, how many yeah. books he reads, yeah, and yeah. you just kind of see the the opposites. You know, you have a, a leader in Buffett who has employees who have been with him since the very beginning, mm. um, you know, and, and we'll be there, 
you know, until, mm. you know, until they, you know, until they, you know, can't be. Um, yeah. And then you see people like, like Musk who are telling people, you know, you need to sleep in the office, you know, yeah. and, and does it get the job done? Sure. You know, yeah. and actually right now people would debate about that, but yeah. in the long term, you're not building trust yeah. and respect. You know, if, if somebody told me you need to sleep in the office tonight, now, obviously it depends on the situation, but if yeah. it's just, there's so much work that needs to be done. And I let so many people go, that, you know, yeah. then, you know, you might do it now, you know, a big part of that would be, okay, you're going to make it worth my time. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. um, but at the same point, you have to wonder, you know, do, is there respect? Is there loyalty? And I think that's mm. the big thing that we're seeing. And you mentioned it, that it is so costly to an organization to have to replace an employee. And it's very costly to replace an entry level employee. If you're mm. having to replace your managers and your senior management, I mean, it can, it can completely end a company or slow them down so much they can't function. So yeah. why not, you know, give, you know, give your employees that respect so that they are then loyal to you. Yeah, I think what you just said about Elon Musk uh, is really interesting because, look, he is a phenomenal entrepreneur, mm -hmm. like incredible. I mean, like uh, I'm a huge fan of, of his. Mm -hmm. But when you said that, it made me think of, well, a couple of things. Twitter, obviously, in terms of like the kind of stuff that happened at Twitter mm -hmm. and, and the reports from people that were just kind of just, you know, let go overnight mm -hmm. and all these types of things. So... And the second piece is actually, you know, sometimes you have incredible business people and, you know, entrepreneurs mm -hmm. or, but leadership is a different type of thing. Like right. not every, you know, people mm -hmm. get promoted on performance, mm -hmm. but then actually to kind of manage, mm -hmm. to manage people, mm -hmm. they need that support. They need right. that coaching. They need mm -hmm. that work. Not everyone is not like... Mm -hmm perfect at it so mm -hmm. it takes a different type of person you know and i mm -hmm. think we all have our strengths and our weaknesses mm -hmm. and it's how to find how to obviously improve those weaknesses but then how to really excel those strengths mm -hmm. as well so um like i love elon musk but i don't know if i'd want to work for him necessarily yeah. you know? <laughs> and what to, to have a dinner conversation oh my gosh wouldn't that be fabulous but no i don't think i could work for him <laughs> yeah no, so I, I think there's a uh, yeah so i think yeah, it's it's an interesting thing. I mean, I I also um, yeah, I I think leadership is is there's different there's different ways, and there's people that do it in different ways, and it's like you don't want to say this is the only way, right? Mm -hmm. But you use the example of someone sleep, you know, asking someone to sleep in the office. Mm -hmm. I think if 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 they're bought into the company's mission and they're like, and the company has kind of looked after them and they're. Mm -hmm they're a part of it, then I think they, I think they, mm -hmm. you know, they'll go above and beyond right. to, to get that product out or whatever it is. Right. right. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, look, there's no right answer, right or wrong answer. Yeah. But. I mean, it's, it, it really is specific to, you know, to, to the situation, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and there are, there are times where you have to put in those extra hours, depending on what you're doing. Um, you know, well, I mean, you know, military would be an example of that or like NASA, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I love NASA. I'm a space geek. And, you know, and, oh. and we had, uh, you know, I, I know someone who works for JPL and she said, oh yeah, you know, when it gets down to crunch time, you're sleeping, you're napping, you know, you're not sleeping, you're catching cat naps here and there because, you know, what you're doing is so absolutely critical that you can't say, sorry, going to go home and go to bed now. Yeah. Um, you know, but that's just, they, yeah. they know that going into it though. That's the yeah. other thing is they really know, okay, there are, and I mean, same thing with say a CPA here in the States, mm. when it's tax time, they're yeah, going they're, to be yeah. working 12, 14, 16 yeah. hours a yeah. day, Completely, you know, yeah. And then in June, they sleep. <laughs> you know? um, so, yeah. yeah, it's just, you know, it, it all comes and goes with the job. And, and so it's part of that expectation. But that comes back to those soft people skills. Mm. Are you thanking people when they're doing mm. that? Are you, you know, uh, you know, are you communicating to them why they need to do that? All of those things that a lot of times, you know, if you're just told, hey, you need to do this. You might do it once or twice, but pretty soon it's like, you know, we become the three-year-old child. Why? Yeah. <laughs> you know? well, and it, also what's in it for me? Yeah. Well, speaking of the AI piece that you mentioned earlier, I mean, mm -hmm. I know, um, I know 
Richard has written about this in his blog a, a while ago, but um, like the power of a handwritten note, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, right. you know, how often do you get like mm -hmm. a handwritten thank mm -hmm. you note from if the you ones get... I have are on my wall? Exactly right, but mm -hmm. how like that doesn't take long to write. Right. A mm -hmm. Thank you, not say thank you for your business, thank mm -hmm. you for your support, thank you for helping. You know, mm -hmm. so like, what can what can you do that helps you mm -hmm. helps you stand out? Mm -hmm. And the second thing I think is really interesting is this term that's been that's actually come out of America. It's called quiet quitting, mm -hmm. where yep. employees are basically just doing the bare minimum mm -hmm. in, their, in their work. Right, mm -hmm. so they're like contracted to work nine to five. They mm -hmm. do nine to five. They mm -hmm. don't go up and beyond. They just right. They do their 859 job. is not happening <laughs> exactly yeah so mm -hmm. it's and again i think it's as a leader and in terms of kind of soft skills mm -hmm. and developing and giving you know ex helping people excel in performance and so on it's how do you inspire people mm -hmm. to actually to 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 do more than mm -hmm. that to kind of go right. above and beyond for a mm -hmm. client or a you know fellow mm -hmm. team member or something like that so i think it's yeah it's, it's interesting times in terms of in terms of that piece and then also is obviously as we kind of you know we're in this virtual world which mm -hmm. has incredible um incredible positives incredible opportunities and all that stuff but it's also mm -hmm. got some challenges as well right mm -hmm. where you know people can feel isolated right. and lonely mm -hmm. and, and um you know it's easy for us to talk here now and you mm -hmm. say james how are you doing and i say oh i'm i'm good yeah i'm fine mm -hmm. and i can kind of on a and camera, i'll just okay mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Whereas if we met in person mm -hmm. and we went for a coffee or something, mm -hmm. and then you'd ask me, "Oh, how are you feeling?" I'd say, "Oh, okay, fine." But you'd see my body language, mm -hmm. right. you know, a little bit more. Is what's you know what's wrong mm -hmm. to try and get that person to open up and so on. So I think there is challenges. Mm -hmm. I think there's challenges, but there's also great opportunities mm -hmm. as well. So so right. um, yeah. Well, and as you said, you know, it's sometimes it's just the little things. Um, back when I worked for ING, and again, this is you know twenty years ago. The CEO, now it, we were a, a closed building. You had to have a badge to get in and out. And, um, you know, and, and of course your badge had your name on it. And mm. he calls me into his office, which when the CEO calls you in, you're always like, oh God, what'd I do? Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and he said, I want to redo every single name badge in this company. Now we had, I don't know, probably a thousand employees that were there. And I was like, okay, whatever. And he said, I want the name. I want their first name to be big enough so that if I'm in an elevator with them or meet them in the hall, I can call them by their first name. Mm. And I remember thinking, well, this is a big waste of money. <laughs> right? Yeah. But then of course I thought about it and I realized how right he was, you know, can you imagine you're in the elevator or, you know, going past the CEO of this incredibly large, incredibly profitable company. And he calls you James. Hey James, yeah. how are you doing today? Yeah. I mean, that little thing right there made such a difference for so many people. And, you know, of course, we never told people why we were redoing the badges. Yes. We didn't want them, you know, it was just, oh, you know, the technology changed or something. I don't know, you know, um, but it, it really did make a huge difference. And, and they say, you know, the sweetest word to someone is their own name. Mm. So just simple things like that. I mean, if you if you and and. And I'm one of those people that is name challenged. I might call you Bob. I might call you, <laughs> um, but I, I do the thing of repeating somebody's name back to them so that maybe it sticks in my head a little bit more or even using it in the conversation where sometimes it might seem a little awkward, but it's really not because they're yeah. like, you know, Hey, you know, she remembered my name. Um, yeah. And well, they were and, saying, and, that, mm -hmm. I saw a thing about Bill Clinton that, that, mm -hmm. that was his, that mm -hmm. was his, yep. um, secret sauce in terms mm -hmm. of like he'd meet you'd meet him at a party mm -hmm. or you'd meet him at something mm -hmm. and then a year later you'd oh, meet him and say hey he was Bob, incredible with that mm -hmm. yeah so like he had this kind of has mm -hmm. this presence or or mm -hmm. and I, I and it's like it's not about politics or anything it's more mm -hmm. just the like, kind of charisma mm -hmm. of someone mm -hmm. um, and there was a great there was a great debate where he he um debated george bush uh senior mm -hmm. and uh the question was, because I remember watching this in terms of public speaking, and the mm -hmm. question was from the audience, and it said, so this is early 90s, and someone mm -hmm. said, uh, how has the downturn in the economy affected you personally? Mm -hmm. And just when, when when she asked that question, it was like the last question of the night, mm -hmm. and George Bush, which, I mean, a lot of people would do this, and it was mm -hmm. very lucky that it just, but it obviously picked up in the camera. Mm -hmm. He looked at his watch, oh, uh, mm -hmm. and he just kind of, like, he didn't obviously go like that, but he just mm -hmm. kind of, 
Yeah, glance down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then he 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 tried to answer the question, but he didn't. He kind of didn't really answer it. And she right. was like, well, "How has it affected you mm -hmm. personally?" Right? So then um, they said to Bill Clinton, "Same question." He gets up out of his chair. He walks like into the audience. He walks mm -hmm. towards the person. He said, mm -hmm. "You know what? Well, I'll tell you. You know, in Arkansas, mm -hmm. when I and he just gives right. this unbelievable answer. Mm -hmm. Like, but it's that like a lot of it was mm -hmm. obviously just the." The body language and mm -hmm. the presence and mm -hmm. the, and and we actually had a we had a really interesting um session on give learn on executive presence mm -hmm. and the guy used Zelensky and Putin as right. mm -hmm. as examples. Mm -hmm. Very different people, right? Completely, yeah. And I, it actually made me think. He talked about yeah, presence and and like he wasn't saying that one was better than the other in terms right. of presence, but the mm -hmm. way it was set up was that. You had Zelensky on one side who was wearing army clothing, mm -hmm. was doing a press conference every night in the square. Mm -hmm. So like was out with the people. Right. Was he wasn't troops. locked behind closed doors with all the security. and Exactly. And like, look, we all know that he is down in a bunker and he is mm -hmm. like, you know, he's not like on the front line. Right. With mm -hmm. He's pretty protected. Yeah, he's pretty protected. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, he's still kind of with the troops and mm -hmm. with, the, with the people, right? Mm -hmm. And then it was the contrast was you had Putin on the other side who was in a palace in Moscow. Mm -hmm. He was paranoid about COVID and his mm -hmm. health. And I know a lot of it is rumors and different things, but mm -hmm. the picture was true in that he was at this huge long table. Mm -hmm. He was sitting at one end mm -hmm. and then there was a load of people sitting at the other end like generals, but they were like not sitting beside him. They were mm -hmm. down the far end. Mm -hmm. So it's like, who do you think is getting more accurate information? Who do you think mm -hmm. is more kind of has their ear to the ground mm -hmm. and so on, right? So, so, you know, what can we learn from that in terms of leadership? Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, it's, it's, it's something powerful as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And we see that with athletes also and celebrities. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we were talking before the program and, you know, we, we've talked about it. You know, you, you were a professional tennis player. Mm. Um, you know, and I've been associated with uh, University of Colorado. And so some of the, the athletes that have come out of there and it's always very interesting, even just watching things. I mean, like right now here in the States, um, we've got the NBA finals on and the Nuggets are in. Oh, my gosh. The Nuggets are in. Um, never had, you know, they've never been there before. But one of the players and he is the, the big player and I am not even going to attempt his name because I, it's Nikola. Djokovic and I know I said that wrong um, okay. but um, he is from Serbia and mm. he's this phenomenal player and he's this big beast of a man I mean he's he's huge out there every time he's interviewed he deflects to someone else mm. and you know and, and he is the reason they're winning I mean he and, and one of the other players but you know the other night uh, he he broke records I mean with what he was doing with his play and and things like that and they said, you know, some now they, you know, by now everybody knows when you interview him, this is what's going to happen. But, um, you know, they they said, what, you know, tell us your thoughts on the game or something like that. And he talked about a bench player who came off the bench. Now he scored 20 points. So this was, you know, pretty phenomenal. But yeah. he, he said, we wouldn't have won the game if it weren't for him. Mm. You know, and so it's, you know, and, and, and then we see the other players you know, for whatever sports, um, who, you know, it's all about me and, yes. you know, and, and you played an individual sport. I know you also played doubles, but you know, it, it you, it was pretty much, but yeah, when you've got it was always these, my partner's fault, right. no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he missed that. Um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, the, the team sports, you know, when you've got those superstars and, you know, I've been around people like Peyton Manning, who same thing deflected and it was always everybody else. Um, John Elway. I mean, I am from Colorado, but then when you have the, the players who it is all about me, the mm. team wouldn't be anything without me. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's, you see those people, you see those superstars. And I think, you know, we do, you know, in, in a lot of ways, we put them on those pedestals. Mm -hmm. But at the same point, you also know that they're not beloved by their other players, mm -hmm. you know, by, and, and all of these things. And, and, you know, if they get hurt, they kind of look down at them and go, huh, OK, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, it's it, it, it is different on how 
how you react to other people, how you give recognition to other people. And again, I think when we see good leaders, those are the people who are, yeah, I'm the leader of the team, but I couldn't mm -hmm. do it without the other people. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're speaking there around sport, I think the thing that stands out for me is this thing of feedback, mm -hmm. how important feedback is. And we actually, I actually, so I was at a talk a couple of years ago with a guy, uh, Pat Lamb is his name. He's a, he's a famous rugby coach mm -hmm. in Europe. And he talked about, he talked about coming to Ireland and he talked about feedback and he said, mm -hmm. he's from New Zealand, Pat, mm -hmm. and he, he said to one of the players on the team, he said, um, do you do you like do you like feedback? And the player, the young player said, Oh yeah, I love feedback, coach. Yeah, yeah I mm -hmm. love feedback. So but Pat's point around feedback was when so he took the players to a, a restaurant in Galway for dinner. The guys ordered a steak dinner. One of the guys asked for it to be medium. And then anyway, the the food comes, right? Mm -hmm kid is eating his steak and he's thinking i asked for this to be medium it's well done mm -hmm. and then he says the the owner of the restaurant comes over to the table and says guys how's everyone's meal mm -hmm. tonight and he says the player turns around and goes oh yeah amazing thanks mm -hmm. right and pat's point was actually you're doing him a disservice a disservice mm -hmm. to the owner of the restaurant mm -hmm. because he wants to make that he mm -hmm. wants to make that restaurant better right. the food better and so mm -hmm. on so you actually, you need to crave and get that mm -hmm. accurate feedback mm -hmm. so that you can actually make things better, right? right. And we had uh, on our uh, platform, we had a guy, Bernard Jackman, who's a professional rugby player. Mm -hmm. He talked about like the evolution in, in rugby. Two things. One was he, when, when um, they come in for a Monday morning debrief, mm -hmm. he said with the previous coach, it was very if you made a mistake in the match, you would kind of shy away from, from, you know, you were like, Oh God, I don't. Yeah. Oh, the, what's he going to do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Where he said mm -hmm. the new coach, the coach that is really mm -hmm. successful coach has created this culture where it's, you own the mistake. So mm -hmm. he said guys would come in and they'd mm -hmm. actually own the mistake, mm -hmm. talk about it and then move right. on. Right? But mm -hmm. it's like creating that, that mm -hmm. culture. Um, and he said that they, they would review the game Mm -hmm. so they'd say they play on a Saturday they review the game and then Monday at 12 o'clock or Monday at 2 o'clock a picture of a, a of a sumo wrestler mm -hmm. goes on every screen around mm -hmm. the, around the uh, a, a academy or around mm -hmm. the place and that's the sign for it it means shut up and move on so mm -hmm. we've talked about the yeah, mistakes done. Mm -hmm. we've, we've done the debrief mm -hmm. we've talked about it we've put all the cards on the table and now we're we're, we're moving on so mm -hmm. I think those kind of that kind of feedback thing is is mm -hmm. is something that's really interesting because it's always you know we always we say that we like feedback mm -hmm. but we only kind of like feedback when it's mm -hmm. you know good feedback in mm -hmm. some ways right. it's actually I mm -hmm. think as a as a professional athlete it's always striving for that mm -hmm. feedback to to uh, to to get better mm -hmm. obviously um, and then the other example he used was he actually did a he did a masters on correlation between high performance business and sport mm -hmm. and. The he got to visit Red Bull, which is a very successful mm, Formula mm -hmm. One team. So Red Bull Formula One, mm -hmm. um, and he said their whole thing was so if you're the finance person, if you're the wherever you worked in the building, mm -hmm. the whole thing was will my decision make the car go faster? So mm -hmm. will it make the car go faster? Mm -hmm. Will it make the car go faster? Mm -hmm. So I think in terms of leadership, I think those things are are really crucial in terms of mm -hmm. that kind of feedback piece, getting that accurate feedback, mm -hmm. getting people to kind of own their mistakes mm -hmm. and for the good of the company mm -hmm. in terms of, well, how can we, you know, this is where we are, mm -hmm. what can we learn from or what can we learn mm -hmm. and how do we move, move forward and get better and so on. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and, you know, when you're giving feedback, it's so important to do it in the right way. Okay. You know, the, the, you know, the, the gentleman in the restaurant could have called the server aside and screamed at her. You got my yes. order wrong. You know, that's, that's not going to do anybody any good. In fact, mm -hmm. you know, if, if I were him, I'd be very cautious about eating anything that came out from then on. <laughs> right. You know, you never make the people who serve you food mad. Um, yeah. And, you know, but if he pulled her aside and said, you know, I I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Maybe, you know, maybe it was my fault. 
you know, yes, yeah, but yeah. I, I had, I had ordered medium rare, no need to change it now. Just wanted you to know, um, you know, and, 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 and then she's going to go or he, you know, great, you know, and, and, and probably say, oh my gosh, no, it was my fault. Um, but, but yeah, we, it's, it is all about how you're giving that feedback because it is criticism to some degree, but there's positive criticism and there's negative criticism, mm. um, you know, and, and do we learn from negative criticism? Sure. You know, yes. and, but do we enjoy it? No, <laughs> you know, yes. it's that positive criticism that you're really going to take to heart, especially when you know that whoever is giving it is only giving it to try to help you and make things better. Mm. And that's a, it's a course we have actually this year, and I'm really looking forward to it. Is around, it's around managing difficult conversations. Mm. And again, I think that's like training or mm-hmm. coaching or something. Like, who teaches you kind of to, to, right. to, to like, where do you learn how to mm-hmm. have difficult conversations, mm-hmm. right, or to give give feedback? And mm-hmm. I think you're absolutely you hit the nail on the head with that comment around. Yes, that manager wants the feedback, but it's actually delivering it in a mm-hmm. in a way that they they feel I don't say good about it, mm-hmm. but they there's a very famous football manager, Alex Ferguson, who was a manager of Manchester United, mm-hmm. and he's probably the most one of the most famous coaches in the world. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the players did an interview um, about him, and they said his biggest strength was you could go into a meeting with him and he'd drop you for the next match, but you'd come out of there and you'd feel like I'm amazing. And what mm-hmm. he did was he would say like, look, I'm going to drop, you're, you're not going to play mm-hmm. against Liverpool next week, but that's because I need you in three weeks against. Ah. Bayern Munich, mm-hmm. Right. So it's like, you know, it's like, he, mm-hmm. he, he's like, I have to have you mm-hmm. for that Bayern Munich match. So it's like it's kind of a roundabout compliment mm-hmm. of, of uh, yeah so you're people, so good that i'm not going to play you yeah. okay <laughs> yeah, yeah so he's like he, he, he said a player would come out and they'd be like was i i was just dropped but uh yeah mm-hmm. so i think there's a, i think there's a knack to that there's a skill mm-hmm. to that and i think it's something we can we can definitely uh get better at and i think mm-hmm. you know in terms of your listeners and i'm small business right so mm-hmm you know, small businesses and, and companies growing companies and stuff. There's just, you know, there's not enough time in the day sometimes. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think, I think words matter and what you mm-hmm. say matter. And I think it's important mm-hmm. that you don't kind of, you know, rush a conversation mm-hmm. with someone or, or, um, as I say, say something you regret, but mm-hmm. I think there's that element of, of, um, time is, time is precious. Mm-hmm. And I think getting things right is really important. Right. Yeah, and even if it means that you have to pause for a moment to mm. kind of gather your thoughts, maybe it's that you're, you know, pausing so that you're not saying you idiot, you know, or or worse, <clears throat> you know, and, and I think, <clears throat> excuse me, that is one of the negatives that we see with social media mm. um, is people, you know, they fire off these things that you'd never say to somebody in person. Um, mm. And, and. For, you know, and in many cases, we don't know them, you know, it's just kind of mm-hmm. like you talk to your TV, you know, you might say that was a stupid play. How, you know, how did you, why did you do it that way? Um, and, and we believe that the computer's monitor is a shield that protects us, mm-hmm. but, you know, or even worse, you know, in, in email, <clears throat> maybe you get an email from, you know, someone you work with and your first response is to type to them, you know, that is so stupid. I can't believe that you did that or you want to do it that way or whatever. You count to 10. <laughs> Sometimes maybe you have to count to a hundred yes, or whatever, yeah. you know, or write your response and then delete it. You know, I always yeah, tell people, yeah. you know, that's okay to do it. Just don't have anybody in the two field. So it doesn't accidentally get sent, yeah, um, yeah. you know, and, and, but because we have those emotions and it's, it's, you know, I think it is okay to get those emotions out. Um, mm. I work with cancer patients. And, and one of the things that I was telling somebody the other day, I said, I am not the person who is going to say, Oh, it will be all right. You're mm. so strong. You can get through this. No, mm. I'm the person that says bad words and says, now mm. you need to get angry at this. That is part, mm. that is a healthy part of the process, mm. but then it's okay. From there we move on, mm. um, you know, and, and so it is, it's so important to, you know, to acknowledge that, you know, okay, that was a bonehead thing to do, mm. but now how do we positively get through it? Mm. I was thinking there, the, the swan that's like above the water and the, mm-hmm. under yeah. the water. The paddling <laughs> furiously, paddling, paddling. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing I think I, in terms of leadership, I think 
and just generally one of the things I, I kind of love to speak about is this is this concept of imposter syndrome mm -hmm. and how like yeah. you know we don't know what someone else is going mm -hmm. through as well right we we can't mm -hmm. control what someone else is going mm -hmm. through and also ourselves right I think right. I think we think that you know you probably look at the CEO of ING and think mm -hmm. He's got it all figured out. Right. When in but reality, maybe he, not. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. So, like, so you know, I, I, I. So, as you mentioned at the start, I got to 145 in the world in mm -hmm. tennis. I got into a, an ATP event in Sweden. Mm -hmm. I went and played this event, and and um, it was one of the biggest events I've played in my life. And I remember going to book a practice court. Mm -hmm. So going to the office, book a practice court, and I saw um, David Ferrer was booked on the so David Ferrer was like number four in the world in tennis, mm -hmm. right? he was an amazing player and I remember genuinely going back to my room mm -hmm. and this sounds absolutely ridiculous but going back to my room and sitting there and thinking I was going to go onto the practice court David Ferrer was going to stop practicing mm -hmm. he was going to turn around he was going to look at me and mm -hmm. he'd say how is this guy in the tournament? Why mm -hmm. is this a fan mm -hmm. that's come onto mm -hmm. the tennis court? So I had all these different thoughts right. in my head. And and I thought I was kind of unique in that sense that mm -hmm. like, you know, I, I I you know, I'm not good enough to be here, all that mm -hmm. sort of stuff. And and I think from speaking to people, whether it's in sport mm -hmm. and business, I think we all have these kind of gremlins mm -hmm. that are like, you know, yeah, that little voice. <laughs> that little voice mm -hmm. that's nagging away. And it's mm -hmm. how and I think things like obviously you know, being a part of a community of people mm -hmm. that support each other, or whether that's coaching or whether that's training, all those mm -hmm. types of things are really important to kind of help you realize that, no, we haven't actually all got it figured mm -hmm. out. Like, And I think one young professional I met before who I met him for a cup of tea and then he was going to meet a partner of a of a mm -hmm. uh, accounting firm. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's the same in the US, but like when someone has a partner beside their name, it seems like it's this, you know, they're yes. very important. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And he was really nervous about it. And I said, mm -hmm. why, are you, why are you nervous? And he said, oh, he's, he's a partner, like he's a partner. And I think we just kind of put these mm -hmm. obstacles in our head or right. in our way. And I'm not saying that I have it figured out because I definitely. Yeah, you don't. know Sir Richard Branson. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I do know him, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I'm not saying I haven't figured out, but I, I, yeah. But I'm sure that there are still people where you would go, ooh. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, uh, yeah, I, I, no, I agree. Like, I, I, you know, when I first went to Necker, I, mm -hmm. I um, was very nervous about, mm -hmm. I was thinking, what are these people going to want to speak to me about? Mm -hmm. Like, am I, you know. Am I good I, enough? Am I good enough? Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think. It doesn't matter. I think what level you're at. I think mm -hmm. we all we all go through that. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had a on our platform. We had an imposter syndrome program, and the lecturer quoted that there was I think it was ninety seven percent of people deal mm -hmm. with imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. I was like, I thought it was ninety nine point nine nine nine. So um, yeah, I think it's something to be conscious of as a, a mm -hmm. as a leader or as an employee mm -hmm. that look, we we don't have it all figured out, and right. we're just doing our best to keep mm -hmm. improving. To obviously make the car go faster mm -hmm. and keep keep you know falling mm -hmm. failing forward or falling forward mm -hmm. as they say right you know and i think we need to remember too that those leaders all have the people that they'd go ooh for also mm -hmm. you know i'm not sure who sir richard branson would be nervous about meeting but they're probably somebody i mean maybe yeah. it's the pope or and you know whoever you know because we're all human yeah you know? I asked and, and i yeah Oh, sorry, sorry. I just yeah. got a question. I did ask him who's like, mm -hmm. who's the most impressive kind mm -hmm. of, you know, person that, that he's met. Because I remember mm -hmm. um, asking this and he loved uh, Nelson Mandela was the was the mm -hmm. person that he mm -hmm. he said. Although he, I remember him saying to me that Nelson Mandela is like, it's always, it was always an expensive dinner when you had dinner with him <laughs> because he said they'd have like, you'd have, he'd, He'd have, he'd have like the starter main course mm -hmm. and then it would come to dessert mm -hmm. and then Nelson Mandela would be like and Richard um South Africa we needed this, this yeah, year, mm -hmm. like, try, yeah you know. pony up <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. So it's like it's most expensive dinner so. mm -hmm. um, but yeah I think we all have those we all have those people right that that uh, right. that kind of um yeah are, are mm -hmm. I don't say intimidate us but like mm -hmm. I think they almost inspire us or excite right. us mm -hmm. or, or uh, but I do think that piece of, of 
that community of mm-hmm. people that you put, whether that's a mm-hmm. coaching circle or a you know a group that you put mm-hmm. yourself around i think that's really important that, mm-hmm. that those people kind of uh, support each other mm-hmm. right well james we only have about five minutes left and i would be remiss if i didn't ask this one question because i've never had you know in in 881 programs I've never had a Guinness world record holder on the program. No. So tell us just a tiny bit about that. So uh, we, uh, we broke the Guinness world record for the longest tennis doubles match. So we played for uh, 60 hours, continuous oh. tennis mm-hmm. for, for charity. So we raised money for uh, an organization in Ireland. Actually, they do a lot of, it's called blind tennis where mm-hmm. people who are visually impaired. Right. They uh, use special it, equipment. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. They have a special ball with the, with mm-hmm. the uh, with a bell on it mm-hmm. um so uh yeah we broke the record the record was 57 hours and we played for 60 so wow. um it was one of those ones where at the time it sounded like a great idea <laughs> <laughs> well i don't know if we do it again the rules were you had a you had a five minute break per hour okay um so and then we we actually in the days in the week before the one thing that stayed with me we had a um a guy who's an ultra runner. So mm-hmm. he, he, one of these kind of guys, and he said to us, look, the sun will come up on the Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. The question is whether you guys will still be standing on the court. Mm-hmm. And that was something that stayed with me in mm-hmm. terms of like, mm-hmm. you know, we need to try and get through, get mm-hmm. through the dark periods. And right. I think, I think, um, you know, I think I've never ran a marathon now, so I don't know when people talk about, you know, you go through the wall and all that stuff. Uh-huh. I think one of the really interesting things for me was like when we got, when it was dark, when it was at night, Mm -hmm. it was really, really tough. Mm -hmm. But actually that last day when the sun came up, Mm -hmm. the last like 10 Mm -hmm. hours were not Mm -hmm. that difficult, but the Mm -hmm. previous 10 hours were really hard, you know? So in terms of business wise, I'm always like, well, maybe it's a case where, you know, it's like you're, you're almost, you're, you're, you're on the really hard part of the Mm -hmm. mountain and you just got to get over that mm-hmm. little bit. And then it's like, you yeah. know, it doesn't go up sailing. forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You said it better than me. So uh, yeah, it was a great experience. I love it. You know, and it's, it all just goes to show, you know, exactly what we've been talking about that, you know, leaders have to continue learning. You know, they have to have their own coaches, right? Mm-hmm. You know, professional yeah, athletes that are very successful still have a coach, mm-hmm. um, you know, or they might have multiple coaches. In fact, many mm-hmm. of them do because you've got your strength coach, you've got your conditioning coach, you've got your this coach, that coach. I mean, you know, nobody who is successful knows it all, um, yes. you know, and, and the second we think that that's when we're in trouble um, mm-hmm. and, you know, empowering those around you to have that same feeling is what's going to make things successful. Um, so tell us a little bit more about, you know, give, it, so it's the website is givelearn.net, but tell us more about Give Learn and what are the services that you provide? Yeah, so so for small and medium-sized companies, uh, we provide a full calendar of learning and development mm-hmm. classes. And um, so classes range from leadership, mindset, presentation skills, imposter syndrome, and we've presenters from all over the world. So I've mentioned we have had rocket scientists. Mm -hmm. We had um, Charissa, you mentioned NASA. We had Mm -hmm. an astronaut who went up with Richard on the first uh, Virgin Galactic Mm -hmm. flight, Charissa Bandler. Um, So we have a full calendar, a full Mm -hmm. solution. It's a monthly subscription for companies. Mm -hmm. And so a full calendar of classes. And then we also run bespoke programs for companies as well, uh, mm-hmm. that if they want to do something specifically for their for their teams, okay, uh, we run sessions. Okay. So if you if you'd like to learn more and and get in touch with me, um, if you connect with me on LinkedIn, so mm-hmm. James Klusky, I can't spell my, say my name, James Klusky, um, and then my email is j.klusky at givelearn.net. I so love it. I'd love to hear from you guys. You know, and, and, you know, back to our original point, you know, we all need to give back whatever Mm. level we are able to, we need to give back. Mm. So James, do you have any final thoughts that you want to leave everyone with? Yeah. So, so I was thinking of a couple of, couple of quotes, I think a couple of things that have, I suppose my philosophy in terms of my journey has been surround yourself with the people you want to become. So I think that's a really, 
whether that's a business community group, whether that's, you know, give, learn and learning from people, whether that's your own coach, just get around good people, people that have achieved and that can support you on that, on that journey. So I'd say that would be my, would be my piece is surround yourself with the people you want to become. Oh my gosh. And I am so glad to have met you so that I, I'm now part of that, hopefully. Um, oh, and, and it is just, you have been so inspirational and I've loved this conversation. I hope that we're able to do it again. Until then, I'm Deb Creer. I've been having a great time talking with James Kluski of Give Learn. And until next time, everyone have a great day. Tune in for our next program for even more trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. The Business Power Hour, hosted by Deb Creer, is proud to be part of the C-Suite Network.